In this section, you'll learn about low blood sugars, or what may be called hypoglycemia. Any blood sugar less than 70 is considered to be a low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. This can happen for several reasons, with the most common reason being having too much insulin being administered. This occurs because there was either a mistake in counting carbohydrates or an error in the calculation of the meal insulin dose. Low blood sugar can also occur when there is extra or prolonged exercise without having extra carbohydrates on board or making a mistake in drawing or dialing up the insulin pen. Days that you should be on the lookout for low blood sugars include days that your child is more active than usual, like if they exercise, go swimming, or play sports. Symptoms of a low blood sugar include sweating, shakiness, headache, confusion, weakness, rapid heart rate, irritability, or personality change. Sometimes you may think these are behavior related, but when in doubt, always check the blood sugar. Also, always check the blood sugar prior to treating, regardless. You will use the rule of 15 to treat any blood sugar under 70. The first step to treat a blood sugar below 70 is to give 15 grams of a fast-acting carb. Examples of fast-acting carbs that equal 15 grams include four ounces of regular juice or regular soda, two rolls of Smarties, one tablespoon of honey or corn syrup, three sugar packets, or glucose products sold in pharmacies. After giving the fast-acting carb, wait a full 15 minutes and recheck the blood sugar to make sure it is above 70. If not, repeat the fast-acting carbs and wait another full 15 minutes to recheck. Once the sugar is above 70, you will follow this up with a 15-gram carbohydrate snack that also includes protein, unless it is time for a meal. It is important to remember this must be done even if your child is getting ready for a meal. You will still give insulin for the meal that is eaten after the sugar is above 70, but not the fast-acting carbs. Remember to always treat and then eat. There are some foods that should be avoided when treating a low blood sugars. These would include any type of hard candy, Skittles, or jelly beans. These could all pose a choking hazard for someone who may be confused from a low blood sugar. You also do not want to use milk, peanut butter crackers, or chocolate. All of these will take too long to bring the sugar back up. If a low blood sugar is not recognized, ignored, or goes untreated, it can lead to the patient having a seizure or becoming unconscious. If this occurs, you will have an emergency injection called glucagon on hand to use. This will need to be available for use at home and at school. There is a specific order in the school orders to address the use of glucagon while at school. There are a couple of things to remember about glucagon. It should be injected into a muscle or subcutaneous tissue to work fast. It should be with your child at all times, and it cannot be overdosed. Always contact the diabetes team if glucagon has been administered. Welcome to the Lilly Glucagon tutorial. Glucagon is used to treat severe low blood sugar, a condition known as severe hypoglycemia. This is also sometimes called insulin coma or insulin reaction resulting from severe low blood sugar. This tutorial will discuss the symptoms and risks of severe hypoglycemia and demonstrate how to use glucagon to help in times of emergency. We often describe glucagon by saying, you might not need it, but you'll be glad it's there. Here's why. Glucagon is a potentially life-saving treatment for severe hypoglycemia. An injection of glucagon triggers a burst of glucose into the blood, quickly stopping the symptoms of severe hypoglycemia. If you take insulin, you should have at least one glucagon emergency kit on hand, just in case you need it. Let's begin by discussing the symptoms and risks in the hypoglycemia orientation. Hypoglycemia happens. You or a loved one takes insulin to control blood sugar, but sometimes you might miss a meal, exercise too much, or not eat enough food for the amount of insulin you've taken. Any of these situations can lead to low levels of blood sugar. The good news is that if you can treat mild or moderate hypoglycemia quickly, 
you can often prevent this situation from getting worse and avoid a severe hypoglycemic episode. This is why it's important to recognize the symptoms of mild or moderate low blood sugar. A person with hypoglycemia may be pale, sweaty, dizzy, or irritable. They might also be confused, drowsy, weak, trembling, or hungry. So look for these symptoms and take action by eating or drinking a fast-acting source of sugar like juice, regular soda, or glucose tablets. If not treated quickly, mild or moderate low blood sugar can become severe. In these severe cases, you may become unconscious or experience seizures or convulsions and therefore may be unable to take any sugar by mouth. If your low blood sugar gets so severe that you cannot help yourself, then you'll need a glucagon injection. So be prepared. If you don't already have a Lilly Glucagon Emergency Kit, talk to your doctor. You should also talk to the people who need to be prepared to help you in case of a severe hypoglycemic event. Think about the people you interact with on a daily basis, like family, friends, co-workers, and exercise partners. Share this training program or the accompanying Lilly Glucagon brochure with these people so they will be better prepared in a severe hypoglycemic emergency. Now let's take a look at the directions for use. The Lilly Glucagon Emergency Kit has easy to follow directions for your family, caregivers, friends, and coworkers. There are five steps involved in giving someone an injection of glucagon. Before you begin, familiarize yourself with the kit, which consists of a syringe, cap, and vial. Step one, flip off the seal from the vial of glucagon. Step two, remove the needle cover from the syringe. Now, insert the needle into the rubber stopper on the vial and inject the entire contents of the syringe into the vial. Step three, remove the syringe from the vial and gently swirl the bottle until the liquid becomes clear. Remember, the glucagon should not be used unless the liquid is clear and has a water-like consistency. Step four, holding the vial upside down, insert the same syringe and slowly withdraw all of the liquid. Step five, at this point, you're ready to give the injection. The usual injection site is the top of the thigh. Insert the needle and then inject the glucagon. For children weighing less than 44 pounds, use half the amount, or 0.5 milligrams. When done, turn the person on his or her side to prevent choking. It's extremely important that the person wakes up within 15 minutes after you give the injection. If he or she does not wake up within 15 minutes, give another dose of glucagon and get medical help immediately. When the person awakens and is capable of swallowing, give them a fast-acting source of sugar. For example, try a regular soft drink or juice. Make sure to follow that drink with a longer-acting source of sugar, such as cheese and crackers. And if you haven't done so already, notify the person's doctor. Remember, your healthcare provider should always be told whenever an episode of severe low blood sugar occurs. Prolonged unconsciousness may be harmful, so it's important to follow these steps quickly and carefully. Please see the important safety information and the information for the user at the end of this program for more important facts about using Lilly Glucagon. Now let's consider some important tips to help you stay prepared. Tip number one, educate. First, make sure your friends and family know that if you become unconscious, you will need to receive a glucagon injection. Inform them that your doctor or a medical professional should always be notified afterwards. Have your friends and family view this training program or the accompanying Lilly Glucagon brochure for detailed instructions. Tip number two, inform. Show your family, friends, and coworkers where you keep your kit. If you're unconscious, they'll need to know where to find it. Tip number three, practice. A person who has never given an injection probably will not be able to do so in an emergency. 
So help your family and friends practice and become more comfortable by letting them give you one of your usual insulin injections. Tip number four, check dates. Keep track of the expiration date stamped on the vial label. Plan to ask your doctor about a new kit before this date. Don't be caught in an emergency with an expired kit. Tip number five, ask. You may ask your doctor for a second Lily Glucagon emergency kit. That way, you can be prepared at home and at work. Thank you for viewing this training program. And remember, glucagon is a potentially life-saving treatment for severe hypoglycemia. So having at least one glucagon emergency kit on hand is important. It's also important to instruct yourself and others on how to use the kit in case it might be needed in a severe hypoglycemia emergency. Low blood sugars can be scary for children and their parents. It is important that you are always prepared to treat low blood sugars as they happen.